Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. About a week and a half ago, I received a big donation of some pre-cut glass and mirror and Van Gogh glass. And I'm gonna start by using some of these pieces. I don't like the square shapes, so I'll be rounding some of them out because I'm going to be working on this butterfly. This is a base from Dollar Tree. So I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on it. I just spray painted it black and I will be using Weld Bond to glue the pieces on and then grouting it. I start with a square and just nip off the corners. And then I nip those corners. to this and then I made a piece of epoxy sculpt and then added it and using some tools just made some division lines and added a little bit of texture and then the wire I embedded into the head before it while it was still wet or before it had cured up so now today I'm ready to grout I've already mixed my sanded black grout with water and let it slake so just gonna get after it minutes to set up and so now I'm going to go back with this soft cloth and wipe it. Might give it some more time. It looks a little bit on the wet side still. I think this angle shows the haze a little bit better on that mirror. Mirror is always a little bit tricky. You want to get it absolutely clean because every little speck that's on it reflects so then you have twice as much of a mess. Still a little bit wet. I'm really excited for this next step. I have purchased this Fine Tech pearlescent color. It is a watercolor. It says high quality made in Germany. I looked it up online. It says it's light fast, it's opaque, and it's made with mica pigment and gum arabic. So here it is. I just bought this one color, which is a bronze. And so I'm gonna add a few drops of water to get it sort of loosened up. And then I'm going to be adding it over the body to get a nice pearlescent finish that sort of goes with the rest of my butterfly. And how gorgeous that is so far. I 
absolutely dazzling in the sunlight. Oh my word. Huh. I'm about to start a big project and I have purchased a piece of go board which comes in three foot by five foot pieces. I purchased it at the tile shop here. I live in Georgia in the United States and it is very economical. It's wonderful to be able to get your hands on this product and be able to buy just one piece. I think it was less than $30 for this piece and I'm going to cut it down into a 30 inch by 30 inch substrate. It is so easy to cut. So I'm going to show you how I do it. To cut it, I just use a, an X-Acto blade. I've already measured it. And I've got a straight edge here to keep me going at 90 degrees. So I score it twice. And my T-square is not quite long enough, so I'm gonna flip it. Get the rest of it. So I've scored it twice. And now I just bring it to the edge and isn't that great? It's that easy, folks. This has a fiberglass coating on it though, so you don't want to handle it too much. You get fiberglass on your hands. I'll show you how to do the other one. I've moved inside for this next portion. What I'm going to do is attach the uh, weedy washer kit, which is the hanging system. And I wanna come down one third of the way. So this is gonna be the top and this is 30 inches. So I come down 10 inches and I just made a mark here and here. It's four inches in, I will be framing this. And I'm gonna start by drilling pilot holes. You can use an awl for that step or I already have my drill out. So I'm just gonna drill it pulling it off the table so it doesn't drill into the table. I've got some pliers now to hold the nut on one side while I drill through to the other side. And uh, let me just show you how that works. Pop the washer over the hole. Push the screw, screw through. It can be extremely difficult to catch the nut with the screw. In this case, the screw is three quarters of an inch and the go board is half an inch. And I just struggled and struggled with it and I couldn't get it. So finally I took the D-ring off and I just tightened the nut. And what that did was it helped the weedy washers to sink into the board. And then I was able to take the washer off and then put the D-ring back on and the, screw, the nut was able to catch on the screw and I was able to screw it in. But boy, I struggled with that. Another option would be to use a longer screw, like a one inch screw. And then there's no problem getting the nut on there, but the screw is too long, so then you have to cut the screw off. And I use a Dremel to do that. Any type of substrate that has a foam core like this one, I would wrap the edges with alkali resistant fiberglass tape and then put a layer of thin set on just to protect the edges. But in this particular case, I have found the perfect frame. I'm not sure how long ago I purchased this, but it's been in my garage for a while. So, um, so that is why I cut the piece 30 by 30 because it, the frame fits perfectly in there. And I am going to probably work on it without the frame. I'm going to paint the frame. I have to clean it up and paint it. And then on the back, when it comes time to mount it, I'm going to add a bracket right in each of the corners with screws that will keep it in place. 
and it just it fits so perfectly in there. It's nice and snug. So that's what I'm going to do. This is going to be my design. These are some photos that I have taken of sunflowers. They were actually three separate photos, and I, I'm cobbling them together in one. I like the big areas here. I think I might put beads in the centers of the flowers with um, some flowers in the background where you can't really see them as well. Really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer it with transfer paper. Some of the petals are sort of cut off from where I did that, and I'll just have to sort of eyeball where I think those petals will go. And let me get after it. Also, I positioned the flowers a little bit lower on the substrate because I want a lot of blue sky up above. And down here, I'm going to have some leaves and some greenery, but I wanted plenty of space to play with the blue and the yellow contrast up above. And then also, I used the rule of thirds to sort of place these on that one-third division line coming vertically. So That's to transfer the design, I just take some carbon paper. And this is carbon paper that I have clearly already used for a different project. I slip it underneath my design and then I trace it with ballpoint pen. I remove the paper and the design is transferred. Mm -hmm. One of the centers on these sunflowers I'm making a little bit different so this first one I'm putting some of these small beads that I won't be putting in the others way to, to put the beads in the epoxy sculpt is to have them on a strand and to push them into the epoxy and then pull the string out. When it's almost full and there's no more room for strung beads, I add beads individually as needed to fill in the gaps.
I got a good start on this by finishing all of the beadwork and I pulled some yellows and I'll get started on that next week. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.